trying, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not hearing the audio. Yes, go ahead and start. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the October 21, 2021 Arts and Culture meeting. Roll call, please. Roll call, Commissioner Zweier. Here. Commissioner Bidor. Here. Commissioner Zadorian. Here. Vice Chair Yang. Here. Chairperson Tu Feng Yang. Yes, here. Agenda item 1A, report of recorder reposting of the agenda. The agenda for the October 21st, 2021 regular meeting was posted on October 15th, 2021 on the bulletin board outside of City Hall. Agenda item 2A, minutes of the September 16th, 2021 regular meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission. Any corrections or um, comments on those? Yes, Chair, to thank you, and I have one small um, correction, I believe, on item six um, under mural ordinance update. The, mm -hmm. the last line of that paragraph um, refers to the commission's October 16th, 2021 regular meeting. Either that would be today's meeting, October 21st, or oh. I don't know if there was a a special meeting held of the mural committee or what that's, that's my um, thank you commissioner buyer i will make sure to amend the minutes for the correct date thank you thank you commissioner buyer any other changes or additions okay do we have a motion to move i move that we approve the september minutes with the amendment noted by commissioner buyer I'll second that. Thank you. Roll call commissioners Vyar. Yes. Vitor. Yes. Zadorian. Yes. Vice Chair Yank. Yes. Chairperson to thank you. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 3A, um, libraries and culture events presented by General Herbert Jones. Before we jump into that, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Tracy Bergen, who's our public arts intern. Tracy, if you're here, uh, can you please unmute yourself and, and introduce yourself? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm Tracy. Um, I'm the new public arts intern and I'm a senior studio art major at Occidental College right now. Thank you, Tracy. We are going to be working with Tracy through um, the LA County Department of Arts and Culture Arts Internship Program. Tracy will be with us uh, through about February of 2022, and has already dived in and done a lot of great work with us. So, I want to thank you to the county, LA County Department of Arts and Culture, for supporting this internship. Uh, and thank you, Tracy. We're excited to work with you. Is there a specific um, project that she's going to focus on, or? Tracy's really focusing on marketing and communications for the commission program. She's taking a lot of uh, documentation and photography to document our programs, which we haven't done in the past. Um, and she also has a really great opportunity to work on all the different projects that are coming up with the commission. So it's going to be a really meaty, exciting internship. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go on to the library and culture events report. Uh, if we have non exhibit uh, in our gas station is Diversity Tree, which is a mixed media installation inspired by materials and art process developed in the Galeria Rodrigo Tonal in Oaxaca, Mexico. The tree is a symbol for LA County's diverse population, and the drooping tree branches and leaves represent the ethnic communities within capturing a feeling of cultural unity. For more information, please see the link on the screen. Next up, we have Light Wave by Light Writers and 1111 Creative Collective, which is an interactive light art installation that reflects our new collective reality, function, and form of two beautiful and elegant side by side waves of colorfully flowing LED light tubes. For more information, please see the link on the screen. Next up, we have the Beyond the Box program, which is our utility box mural art program supported by the City of Glendale Arts and Culture Commission. 
funding for the urban art program. There are currently over 100 painted utility boxes throughout Glendale, and this year, seven artists will be painting utility boxes over the weekend of October 22 through 24 this weekend. Uh, the locations are on the screen for reference, and if you see an artist painting this weekend, please feel free to stop by and say hello. For more information, please see the link on the screen. Joining us on Saturday um, for an eclectic series outside the Arts Hub the Two 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 East Concert Series. Visitors are welcome to bring an ex chair and enjoy the music on the Paseo. Seats are not provided. Performances run sixty minutes without intermission. Concerts are Saturdays in October at four p.m. We have two more concerts coming up Saturday, October twenty third at four o'clock, featuring Coveted Future, and on Saturday, October thirtieth, four o'clock, we'll be featuring the Igor Kogan Quartet. Uh, quintet, excuse me. Uh, for more information on the concerts, please see the link on the screen. Uh, next up, the Brand Associates, in partnership with the Brand Library and Arts Center, are pleased to announce the closing reception of Brand 49 Annual National Juried Exhibition of Works on Paper on view through October 29th. The exhibition includes 125 artworks chosen from tw over 1,200 submissions selected by Juror Marvea Moto. Director of Artistic Programs and Education at Sub Graphics and Art in Los Angeles. The exhibit will have extended viewing hours on October 29th from uh, till six from six to eight p.m. Light refreshments will be served on the plaza. Masks are required in the gallery. For more information, please visit the link on the screen. Join us for the annual Dia de los Muertos uh, Day of the Dead celebrations at Glendale Central Library on Saturday, November 6th from 3 to 7 p.m. Participate in Community Altar by bringing your offerings to Central Library from November 1st to the 5th. For more information, please see the link on the screen. Glendale Library Arts and Culture is happy to introduce our new interactive library catalog. The new catalog will provide an improved user experience and modern search capabilities, allowing each easier browsing through um, not only titles, but formats as well. The cover art gallery is a new prominent uh, perk and offers breezier perusing through new titles, staff picks, bestsellers, recently viewed materials, recorded books, and featured languages. The search function has been designed for easier use and allows searching by keywords and media for the users who aren't quite sure what they're looking for. The interactive library catalog has an engaging quality. Using library card and pin to create a profile, you can write reviews, rate titles, follow other profiles, and create lists. For more information, please see the link on the screen. Next up, Glendale residents are vaccinated at a rate of 12% below the vaccination rate for the LA County at large. Additionally, 76% of Glendale seniors are vaccinated and countywide, 92% of people over 65 are vaccinated. Glendale Libraries and Culture is working to change those numbers by recruiting and training community members to become vaccine influencers who have the tools to effectively build vaccine confidence with their family and friends. By attending a one hour online program, vaccine influencers learn how to see evidence based communication strategies, how to handle misinformation, and the basics of how vaccines work. For more information, please visit the link on the screen. And that is what we have for the library report. Thank you, Jennifer. And moving on, what do we have? We have um, oral communications. Let me check our oral communications. We do not have any at this time. Okay. And I think we wanted to move one of the uh, discussion items up. Is that correct? correct? Yes, with your approval, Coach Chair Tupankian, we'd like to move up agenda item 6A, which is the Arts Off Creative Pilot Program update. And I'm going to hand it over to Juan Gonzalez, who's the Neighborhood Super, Super Services Supervisor with the Community Development Department. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Chair Tefankian, Arts and Culture Commissioners, Director Schaefer and staff, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to join you this afternoon to give you a brief update on the Artsa Creative Retail Pop-Up Program. Um, economic development staff have previously attended commission meetings to brief you on the exciting changes that will be taking place on Artsoc Avenue over the next couple of years. These include an expanded pedestrian area, a single one-way traffic lane, gateway signage, street furniture, performance space, 
and most importantly, public art. Recognizing we had a short window of time before construction started, economic development uh, created Artsakh Creative, a short term pilot retail pop up program designed to test different types of businesses that could populate an arts and entertainment district. Many uh, cities across the country are doing this. Um, uh, Long Beach being um, an example in Southern California and um, Nashville being another uh, leader in the national front. Um, outreach was conducted and 49 proposals were submitted uh, by potential uh, participants. In order to ensure that the goals and objectives of the Arts and Culture Commission were included in the selection process, Library Arts and Culture Administrator Jennifer Fukutomi Jones was invited to join our staff in reviewing the proposals, interviewing finalists, and selecting the initial participants for round one of Artsoc Creative. Uh, the participants uh, began moving into the units in late August and September, and will be in their assigned units through early 2022, at which point a second round of Artsac Creative participants would move into the city-owned units for another six-month period. I would now like to introduce our initial team Artsac Creative participants to you and let um, those that are present say a few words um, unfortunately, two of our participants are unable to be here, but we have uh, two who are. Uh, our first participant is located at 117th North Artsakh. It's the McCurchian Art Gallery. The McCurchian family are the curators of the first private art gallery opened in Armenia and were a previous tenant in this unit from 2010 through 2015. Um, the uh, art scene McCurchian is unable to join us uh, this afternoon. Next up is the Glendale Cultural and Arts Center located at 123 North Artsakh. This pop-up is the brainchild of Nicole Agavavian and his wife, Lucine. Um, Nicole is the former head of the arts department in the Ministry of Culture in Armenia. The center specializes in various aspects of culture, including art instruction. Uh, please uh, join me in welcoming Nicole Agavavian and Lucine. Nicole? Hi. Hi, Joe. Lucine introduce our... Uh, oh, <laughs> hello. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank City of Glendale to give us this chance to be a part of Arts of Creative program. And Juan Gonzalez, with whom we are in direct contact. We are representing Glendale Cultural and Arts Center, which is located on 123 North Artsakh Avenue. It is already three months that we are in this location. During this time, uh, had managed to do many projects. Also, we currently have ongoing ones. We had a grand opening of our center, which was successful. After that, during this time, the number of visitors become over hundreds weekly. From the first week of our entrance, uh, we started art classes three times a week with different groups, uh, group ages. Daily, we have more new students coming. Uh, now we have more than 20 new students. On October 1st, we organized free workshop for art lovers. We gave them all necessary supplies and enrolled 15 participants. As it was a very success, most of the participants requested to organize next one. So we decided to do it in Seascape. In our unit, we also have a gift shop corner, which is already lower and popular with our visitors. Right now from our unit, uh, we are shooting YouTube program called World and Culture. Uh, we also thought about upcoming holidays too. 
Uh, we are planning puppet show for children and musical evenings for adults. Above managed facts shown that during this short time, we successfully moved forward and now we can see the progress day by day. A lot of people already know our location. Now I can say that we have uh, regular visitors. Thank you. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Lucine. Um, moving on uh, to the Glendale Room, located at 127th North Artsakh. It comes to us from Sean Casey, the owner of the West Side Comedy Theater. This comedy venue and training center um, will feature nightly comedy shows and classes for the community. Please welcome Sean Casey. Thank you so much for having me, everyone. Uh, yes, we are the Glendale Room for Comedy, and uh, we were able to have our first uh, open event the other Saturday, uh, which felt so nice to do in conjunction with the concert that was happening. It felt like such a nice uh, synergy of the outdoor performance and, and then people uh, keeping their minds open for returning to live performance in general. Uh, we're happy to be hosting a whole slate of super exciting shows. I think we've managed to Pied Piper pretty much all the talent out of Burbank. I know that wasn't your plan. I know that's not your goal, but uh, we are, uh, th they're coming <laughs> is, is what uh, everybody's telling me. So it's very nice that we're going to have our open mic on Wednesdays starting up next week. Uh, we're providing fantastic platform for traditionally unrepresented voices in comedy. Uh, we have improv shows that are coming up in Spanish. We have, uh, there's a, a, a program by the same people who made a TV show called Born This Way about trans individuals were being featured. Uh, there's a, a, a trans comic who is one of the funniest people on earth and we're taping tomorrow. Uh, there'll be some great pull quotes in the New York Times that I think feature both what you're doing with the pop-up project and specifically our location, not to try to get selfish with it, but we're looking to have some really great mention in The Grey Lady, which uh, for me personally, oh my gosh, you know, like what a, what a super exciting uh, opportunity that is. But obviously it's Jeffrey J's show. We're, yes, we're pushing all our support to uh, the great comics that we're working with. Jeffrey J, James the Dome, is going to be you know, Dahlia Malik, Jackie Monahan. These are all people um, who audiences know from you know Netflix and Hulu and HBO and all that great stuff. And having them in what amounts to LA's coziest room for comedy. You know, we're talking a sub fifty room that has living room bookstore vibes. And just as the weather gets chilly, the vibe is so right, and you're three rows out from just some really great names. Uh, I, I wanna say thanks for having us and truly everyone I brought out to check out the space to talk about producing a show or whatever we're gonna do together gets it about the Paseo and they are really, really excited. Um, so thank you for, for providing this opportunity for people to get excited. Thank you, Sean. Our final uh, Artsakh creative participant, um, they were unable to join us, um, but there is a store called Naked Frankie located at 131 North Artsakh. Um, it is the um, brainchild of entrepreneurs uh, Jennifer Zhao and Emily Che. Um, they've created a sustainable bath and beauty um, retailer featuring featuring products made with the purest ingredients that are naked of waste and harmful um, chemicals. They've scheduled um, some uh, events as well. They held um, a successful opening event at the end of uh, August, and they're planning a number of exciting programs. We encourage Glendale community members to come out and check out these um, new businesses on Artsakh, as well as checking uh, the existing businesses. 
once again, these um, businesses are going to be in their units through early 2022. Uh, we just closed the application period for round two last week, and we'll begin reviewing applications shortly. Uh, we expect for the next round of participants to move in by March 2022. Um, this concludes my uh, prepared comments. If there are any questions for myself or any of the participants, we would be glad to um, respond them to you uh, at this time. Okay, well, thank you so much, Juan. Well, that was a um, thorough, pretty thorough um, explanation, but I'd like to, I've got some questions, but I'd like to first open it up to my fellow commissioners. Um, so, uh, Commissioner, um, uh, Vice Chair Yank, any questions or comments? Um, my only comment is that it just seems like a really uh, diverse, you know, group of, of um, different pop-ups that you've uh, made available. So I think it's exciting offerings uh, for the community at large. Uh, I don't have any questions beyond that. Okay. Commissioner Vayar? No questions, but thank you, Juan. And um, I do want to say that I've already shopped at Naked Frankie with my uh, granddaughter who purchased some makeup, or I guess I purchased the makeup for my granddaughter um, while they're at a concert down at, at a concert on the Paseo a couple of weeks ago. Um, very exciting program. And uh, I'm going to get to that comedy club soon. <laughs> thank you all. Commissioner Vidori? Uh, yes, uh, same thing. Thank you all very much for presenting. Uh, thank you, Juan, for your overview of the project. Great idea. Um, I have a question about that. I, you know, I think your point of getting the community out to experience these four entities and give their feedback would be wonderful. And I know at times there have been things on streets in Glendale where people have an opportunity to go experience and then leave some feedback. And I wondered if you were planning to reach out to the community in some way so that you could maybe for a couple of days in a row, draw people in with a view to having them give their impressions and thoughts about it. Um, we can definitely, um, uh, we we can definitely do something along those lines. It's really important to 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 get feedback. Um, and um, let me get together with our uh, team and see what we can brainstorm to come up with. And then, you know, we'll we'll spread the word, and and you know, really hear from the, the community. We want to hear what they like, what they'd like to see now and as well for the future. You know, once the construction's done and the arts and entertainment district is established. Well, that's great. And I'd appreciate it if it, you with Jennifer could follow up with the commission on that. So we see what it is you're going to do. And yeah, I, I, my curiosity is piqued about that comedy club, and I have to, uh, <laughs> I have to now reveal my stupidity and naivety and incredible unhipness, uh, Sean. What is the gray lady? <laughs> I'll probably oh, never. So, I've never yeah. I've lived this down. I have a feeling, but go. No, ahead. no, no. I'm, I, I'm trying to be too clever by half. It's it's just uh, uh, the New York Times. That's sometimes people okay. call it. The gray lady is the New York Times. God. I've been around the planet for a while. I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they changed it and I need to get a subscriber. it. Subscriber. Oh, <laughs> embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. I guess that leaves me last or sorry. Yes. Second. There's Odoria. Yes. Um, I don't have any questions, just thank you. I don't want to sound redundant, ask the same kinds of questions. So thank you, Juan. Um, very much looking forward to going. I guess I haven't been to Artsakh in a while if I haven't noticed these. So I'm looking forward to it very much. Thank you. 
Yes, same here. I'm very much looking forward to visiting these pop-ups. Um, my only question would be, where do you, um, how do people know to apply for these pop-ups and how often are you going to um, make that available? Well, uh, we originally conducted outreach via social media. We had a dedicated page on the economic development website. It was in the various city newsletters. Um, uh, and we were very lucky that um, we partnered with your staff. They also helped um, conduct outreach via your, your newsletter, social media. Um, right now, we have um, committed to doing the program for a full year and um, because construction is due to start in uh, late 2022. So we're going to initially, as of right now, do two cycles, the one we're doing right now and then the one which will start in spring of 2022. Yeah, so then you would take a hiatus until construction's over and then maybe start up again or? Well, we would have to wait um, for direction from the Glendale City Council. We were given direction to do the program for a year. Okay. And we would return and report back to them and then uh, follow their direction on how they'd like All to right. proceed. Thank you. Thank you again for your presentation and uh, good luck. And I can't wait to come out and see these four pop ups. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay. Okay. And moving on. So we are now at. Um, we are now at uh, agenda item 5A, which is the public hearing. So, Trinity Finkin, would you like to proceed with the public hearing? Uh, yes, just one minute. Okay, so first, I think I have to see if there are any uh, commissioners who need to recuse themselves or. Um... No. Okay. Okay. I will so... Go ahead and, and read the agenda item. So agenda item 5, a public hearing design review of the Campbell Central mural building an inclusive community for all located at 6512 San Fernando Road. And the motion is approving with conditions design review of the Campbell Central mural building an inclusive mural community for all located at 6512 San Fernando Road. And I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, and so now we are going to announce the opening of the public hearing. Yes. Proceed and, to and okay. with the presentation. Um, so first we have the applicant is requesting approval of a mural to be painted on the southwest exterior wall of the Campbell Center located at 6512 San Fernando Road. The mural will face San Fernando Road. The project is exempt from CEQA review as a class one existing facilities exemption pursuant to section 15301 of the California state CEQA guidelines because the proposed mural would be applied to the exterior wall of an existing building. No other alterations to the building or extension of the use is proposed. The project site is the exterior south facing wall of the Campbell Center in the SMU San Fernando mixed use zone off of San Fernando Road. The property is part of the Campbell Center, which also contains five parking space directly in front of the Campbell Center off of San Fernando Road. The Campbell Center, in partnership with muralism.org, is proposing to paint a mural on the southwest front of the building, which depicts a cityscape with buildings at the base, in addition to mountains, trees, and clouds. The mural will be painted directly onto the exterior south facing wall of the Campbell Center. The proposed dot design rendering depicts the cityscape with buildings at the base, in addition to mountains, trees, and clouds. The rendering also contains several elements which fall outside uh, of the design mural design review jurisdiction of the Arts and Culture Commission, specifically the review of the Campbell Center's name, logo, and tagline at the top, the window applique, the images of people in the middle, and the painting of the rock pony wall facade. So basically the Arts and Culture Commission is going to re be reviewing the red circles on this image uh, and will not be reviewing the black circles on this image. 
the community development department will review these for compliance with the city zoning code regulation signs, window signs, and painting of structures. Uh, the Arts and Culture Commission will only be reviewing the elements aforementioned. Um, the mirror will not feature any letters, numbers, or symbols bearing commercial advertising message. Section 304740 of the Glendale Municipal Code requires the Arts and Culture Commission to ensure that the murals are consistent with the following standards that are on the screen. For number one, the mural proposed does not constitute any form of commercial advertisement. In regards to number two, the mural proposed the proposed mural does not contain any obscenities. Should the commission approve the project, a condition will be added to the approval prohibiting obscenities of any of the murals. For number three, the project site does not require any landscaping. For number four, the proposed mural will be given coats of exterior acrylic primer, and the mural will be executed with high quality exterior acrylic paint. Muralism will apply world's greatest water-based, all weather biodegradable anti-graffiti sealant to the mural for durability. Muralism will also apply a mural shield, which is a flexible protective coating onto the mural as well. Uh, and for number five, the proposed mural will be on an existing wall of the Campbell Center. Staff is recommending that the mural be approved with conditions as displayed on the screen that reflect the motion. Um, specifically, number one, granted the approval granted will be on the location identified in the motion. Changes to the or size of the mural must be submitted to library staff for review and approval. Number two, staff, um, I'm sorry, mural must not constitute any form of commercial advertisement. Any proposed verbiage on the entryway panels will need to be obscured or illegible. Number three, the mural must not contain any obscenities. Number four, the mural must be well maintained. Number five, a maintenance plan for the mural must be submitted to the Library Arts and Culture Department staff for review and approval. And number six, for the non-mural elements depicted in the design rendering submitted as part of the mural design review hearing, those non-mural elements must fully comply with applicable city codes and the applicant or the Campbell Center must obtain from city departments, including the Community Development Department and other city boards and commissions, all other approvals authorizations and permits as required by those codes. This concludes the design review report on the proposed mural for 6512 San Fernando Road. Prior to the opening up of the commission comments, staff would like to reiterate that per section 304040 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the Arts and Culture Commission is charged with the assessment of the five conditions previously read. All city regulations must be content neutral and viewpoint neutral. The commission cannot comment on or regulate the content of the mural. If the commission is interested in understanding the inspiration or background of the mural, you're more than welcome to propose questions, but the commission is unable to base a decision based on the content of the mural. So that concludes the staff report. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, and now I'll open it up to fellow commissioners and if there's any questions or comments, uh, Vice Chair Yank. Um, no, no comment. Okay, Commissioner Bayard. Um, no, thank you. And Commissioner Vitor. Could you put a picture of the um, the rendering up again, <clears throat> uh, Jennifer? Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. So. My head's swimming a little bit because it seems to me with this particular um, thing, which in principle, I, you know, I'll say up front, I have nothing against uh, the design, what's on here, what's being presented to the street. However, I see what to me looks basically like commercial advertising uh, embedded in the section of this piece where we are uh, overseeing and reviewing a mural, and I also see what looks like um, photographs, am I correct? Photographs of people in the windows that are gonna be presented. Uh, if I have that correct, that there are going to be images of people, that is certainly part of the design, a very, very prominent part of the design, actually, a very strong part of the design. and. I'm not sure I understand why that isn't considered part of the mural. Um, and it just, you know, it's probably, I'm assuming because we're in a transitional stage here and 
we're in between murals and we're getting Ms. Odenkirk to help us develop our ordinance and be clear on murals and how they're regulated. But to me, this looks like a conflation of a sign with commercial advertising and a mural. And in order to exempt them from the mural requirements, we've been given parts of it to regulate. And in order for them to go ahead and also call this a sign or an advertisement, uh, certain parts are being carved out that we're not looking at. So it's a little bit confusing. Um, bottom line is I have nothing wrong with the design, but I don't understand the approach to uh, you know, how this thing is being overseen and regulated as such. And I assume that we could move move on from this type of approach once we have our, our ordinance in place. Well, I guess we'll find out soon, but to me, this looks like signage. <clears throat> so just a comment there. I'm fine with what is going to be painted on the facade. Chair, sure, thank you. Chair Tavinkian. May I? I can't hear you. Oh. Schaefer, go ahead. Uh, Gary Schaefer, Director of Library Arts and Culture. Um, so, uh, Chair Tavinkian, uh, Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Vidor, uh, if these were not windows and they were boards or walls painted with photographs, you know, likenesses of people, then it would be a mural and we would weigh in on that. But in fact, these are proposed uh, appliques. Um, so they are not murals. They are, um, and and those uh, type of things are, are regulated by the community development department. So we don't weigh in on window appliques and whether, you know, they're you know, part of this or not. So, so that's the reason you're seeing people, uh, you know, but it's not, it's not a mural. So basically that's the answer to that, uh, to, to that concern. Commissioner Vidor, any, um, does that satisfy your, uh, well, I, I don't think prob probably as we get deeper into the mural ordinance and things, there will be more discussion about this. I, I don't understand. I still don't understand the carve outs. I guess the definition of a mural, um, maybe I don't right now understand what that is. But since those images are part of the overall design and appearance, of the rendering and must um, be compatible with the rest of it, I would look at the whole thing as one continuous thing. I wouldn't be able to carve it out the way it's been carved out. So I guess but I'll- with, it's, know, with, I, it's without our jurisdiction. We do not have jurisdiction over that. Yeah, right, okay. And I'm 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 fine with that. So th thank you for the clarification. And You bet. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schaefer. Uh, Commissioner Zadorian. Um, I do not have any questions. Seeming as though you explained thoroughly that it complies with conditions, I'm ready to vote. Okay. All right. I don't have any further questions either. Um, do we have someone who can uh, move the motion? I don't have the motion in front of me. But if you give me one second. I, I can read it for you. Oh, please, go ahead. Okay. Uh, motion approving with conditions, design review of the Campbell Center mural building, an inclusive community for all located at 6512 San Fernando Road. Correct, yes. I make the motion um, with the conditions. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Roll we'll call Commissioners Vyar. Yes. Vidor? Yes. Sidorian? Yes. Vice Chair Yank? Yes. Chairperson Tufankian? Yes. 
Thank you. We will move on to agenda item. What? Excuse me. Oh, um, oh yes. Chair Tavankian? Yes. And, and, and commissioners, this is Mike Grant. We just need to say that we've, we've closed the hearing. Okay. Yes, we've closed the hearing and we can go back to our regular meeting. Thank you. Uh, next up on the agenda is agenda item 5B, mural ordinance community input meeting. A uh, motion directing staff to host a mural ordinance community input meeting tentatively scheduled for November 2021 via teleconference and appointing one commissioner to attend the mural ordinance community input meeting as a representative of the commission. Uh, as uh, Commissioner Vidor has stated, we are currently working with our, our public art consultant, Sarah Odenkirk, regarding the development of the mural ordinance for the city of Glendale. Staff has met with Ms. Odenkirk and we've um, come to a decision that we would like to recommend that staff hosts a community input meeting in regards to the proposal of a mural ordinance for the city of Glendale. This meeting would be tentatively hosted uh, via teleconference quite like this uh, with the intention of really gathering community feedback and input on the mural or ordinance. I'm sorry, and we had a date, uh, April 15th. Uh, it's not so solidified yet, but it would be taking place in mid-November. It looks like, I'm sorry, Chair Tafinkian, we have a call-in user. Uh, call-in user, can you please state your, your name? Chair Tafinkian and Commissioner Mike Grant, uh, my phone dropped the call card, so that's um, Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I have the, the responsibility of booting folks out who, who <laughs> bombed the meeting. So thank you, Mike Grant. <laughs> we'll rename you. Thank you. Yes, okay. uh, to your question, Terti Frankian, we have a, a tentative date in mid-November, um, but it's pending approval by the commission. Okay. Um, fellow commissioners, any questions or comments? Vice Chair Yank? Um, no, I don't think so. And Commissioner Bayar? Um, no, I don't have any questions. Um, I guess we do. Have, it's necessary to appoint a commissioner before moving the motion, correct? That is correct. And Commissioner Vidor? I think it's a great idea to have a community meeting. Thank you for organizing that. And Commissioner Zadorian? Agreed. Um, should we go ahead and, I guess, recommend somebody? Yes. I mean, would anyone first, before we kind of go to the end, um, did anyone want to recommend themselves? I would like to, well, not myself, but I would like to recommend someone. Okay. Then pass along to, from me to you. Go ahead. I'd like to recommend uh, Commissioner Vidor to be on uh, this committee because I feel she's been very passionate and knowledgeable about uh, the mural ordinance. So I second that. Okay. Well, thank you because um, I certainly feel passionate about it and I don't know how knowledgeable I am. Obviously, the last thing we reviewed indicates I have a lot to learn, um, but I think that um, I'm really looking forward to this meeting and to um, meeting and hearing what Ms. Odenkirk has to say and um, making sure that I'm ready and prepared to be the commission's representative on the meeting. So thank you very much. And I would like to accept that if it's okay with everyone else. Thank you, Commissioner Vidor. And any other, does everyone agree or? Perfect. I can make the motion. Okay, good. I would like to make a motion directing staff to host a mural ordinance community input meeting tentatively scheduled for mid-November of 2021 via teleconference and appoint Commissioner Vidor to attend the mural ordinance community input meeting as a representative of the commission. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll call Commissioners Vyar. Yes. Vidor. Yes. Vice Chair Yank. Yes. Zadorian. 
Yes. Chairperson Tufankian. Yes. Thank you. Moving on agenda item 6B, 2021-2022 work plan progress updates. Uh, we are very delighted to share that the Verdugo Skate Park mural has been installed and we're very thankful to Gui and Aldo Chacon, who is the artist who, ha who did a phenomenal job uh, uh, installing the, the Verdugo Skate Park mural. I'm going to try and share a video, bear with me, I've been having some technical issues today, um, that GTV6 has done to highlight the Verdugo Skate Park mural. I'm just now receiving feedback that no one is hearing this video. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, no one's hearing it. <laughs> it is loud and clear on my end. So yay, technology. <laughs> uh, I am so sorry about that. I will I will definitely make sure to share it with the commission. It's a beautiful video that, that GTP6 has done. Uh, and we'd like to thank them for all. It was still great to follow because it had the subtitles at the least. Yes. Yes. I'm we, sorry. I'm, I'm in, I was enjoying it on my end. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. oh, no, can no one else it. could hear. <laughs> so yeah, I Jennifer, apologize. Jennifer, do you yes. know that you have um, that you have some um, issues with sound on your end, where your voice cuts out and becomes very soft, and then it goes back again? I do, and I I apologize. I don't know what the issue is. This is the third time I've traded headsets, so. I, Okay, as long as you're louder. Aware of it. <laughs> I think it's an internal issue today. Um, so I will make sure to share that with the commission. Apologies that yes, you weren't able we... to join the video as I was. Um, so <laughs> again, we're very excited about the Rudy Escape Park mural. Um, up next, we have um, the Meter Pole Art by Jennifer Benson Gable that has been installed on the city campus perimeter. Uh, 17 meter poles were wraps were installed on the aforementioned streets of Isabel, Broadway, and Glendale Avenue. So if you drive along there, you'll see these wonderful pop up arts uh, of the Glendale uh, Meter Pole Art Project. So we're very excited about that. Um, in regards to AHA as well, we have confirmed installation dates for the YMCA Mural Yoshito Meditating in the Woods by Amy Chisel. Those have been confirmed for January 10th to the 17th of 2022. We're very excited about that. Uh, and we will be in conversation with the YMCA and ACE 121 in regards to a potential reception of sorts to, to unveil the mural. Um, and next up for AHA, we have the Blue Marble Art Collective, uh, who their, their temporary art project entitled Impending Storms will be located at Central Library from March 4th through May 1st of 2022 in conjunction with the Earth Day exhibits at the Reflect Space and the Brand Library, which we're very excited about for next year. Uh, so as of right now, we have 11 out of the 17 AHA projects that have been successfully launched. Two projects are in the process of being launched, as I mentioned earlier, and four other projects are in the process of determining the final logistics. So um, once we receive more information about the rest of the projects, we'll make sure to keep the commission apprised of the, the status. Uh, Can you remind uh, yes. us which four are still outstanding? Sure, we have the, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember them off the top of my head, the, um, oh, the, um, the Versa Style Dance Company, um, mm -hmm. they are actually proposing, we're finalizing the details for that, but they are proposing, um, their, their color and dance event that was originally scheduled to be 
uh, digital and via Zoom, but we're trying to figure out the logistics of that, which will probably launch sometime next year. Um, the Lernanzog Dance and Music Ensemble, um, they were originally going to propose a pop-up performances at senior centers and uh, essential workers, so we're rethinking what that's going to look like, which will probably launch in April of next year. Um, Kathy Horenda's sculpture is in the process uh, of finalizing the, the last logistics, so we're hoping to launch that as soon as possible. Um, and the Museum of Neon Art, they're, they're determining their final logistics as well, which will launch sometime in June of 2022. So those are the four. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, oh, yes, question. Commissioner Vidar. Um, on, on the uh, Kathy Horenda project, um, I know that there were some, there's some issues related to public works installing a footing or some kind of a platform for that piece. And if they, have they completed their section of the to-do list yet? Like who's, whose court is that in right now? Right now, that's a great question, Commissioner Vidor. Thank you. That, that is right now in the hands of the artist, um, Kathy Herenda, and is working with a structural engineer to just establish a uh, platform or steel plate and or concrete uh, footing that will be the foundation of the base. But Director Schaefer, is there something you'd like to add? Um, just that we had met with Public Works yesterday. And so, yes, um, Kathy uh, is working with uh, a city hired structural engineer, as Jennifer just said, determining what's the most cost effective way to move forward. Is it a steel plate, which, you know, just we have to remember steel is uh, caught up in the whole supply chain issues going on right now. Um, probably concrete is as well, but just whichever is least expensive, concrete or steel, once they make that determination, then we will uh, work with a uh, public works designated, uh, probably outside contractor to uh, lay down the concrete if that's necessary, or um, you know they would just bring in a steel plate, um, which that could be handled um, uh, by the vendor who's supplying it. Uh, so we'll, we're just kind of in a wait, I wouldn't say wait and see on that. They just, as soon as they make that determination, we're hopeful to use a city owned steel plate, but uh, Kathy's uh, specifications were larger than any of the plates the city owns. So um, that didn't work. Uh, so now uh, this is where we're at right now, uh, but hopeful to get that in as soon as possible. Okay, so the decision is now with uh, public works sourcing the right kind of plate. No, the situation is with Kathy and the uh, structural engineer. What is the least expensive way to proceed, concrete or steel plate? I see. Okay. So if they determine steel plate, then we work with the vendor to get the steel plate in. If they determine concrete, then we'll have to work with public works to identify a contractor that can pour, uh, you know, the concrete footing for it and coordinate with her so that the art goes in uh, at the same time. I see. Okay, thank you. you. Thank you. To add a quick comment onto that, there's a, as, as Director Schaefer had mentioned, there's a possibility that the, and there's been an increase in costs due to steel and the backup with COVID-19 and the supply chain. Um, if Ms. Horenda does decide that there, uh, she would like to propose an increase to her budget, she would bring that up uh, at a future commission date, which would be approved by the commission. But just wanted to share that as well, that that's a possibility. Uh, oh, so this um, this uh, steel plate or whatever this foundational material it is, is paid for by the artist? That's on the cost of the... Originally, that was part of her budget, um, but due to the the long exchange and the, the timing of COVID-19 in the supply chain, there's a high probability that the budget will need to be uh, expanded. Um, so the if there is a proposed new budget, we would make sure to bring that to the Arts and Culture Commission for approval. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, I will be moving on to the Bass Project's RFQ update. So we're happy to share that the RFQ closed uh, on October 8th, and we received 256 applications for this RFQ, which we were very happy about. Um, Labas, Labas is in the process of combing through all the applications. Uh, we are going to be meeting actually next week with Vice Chair Yank uh, and the committee to review the initial applications for this RFQ, and we will make sure to keep the commission apprised of any updates for this um, particular RFQ and process. Um, and then lastly, the mural ordinance update, yeah, which we already quick oh, yes. uh, So that's great. 256 applications is really, really good. Um, so from that, how many would you be looking at? 
I believe we're looking at all of them. Um, Labasque oh. projects might be doing an initial assessment of kind of what they think are kind of the applications that have risen to the top, but we definitely have the ability to review all the applications. Um, and we'll, we'll do so if we feel like that the top um, applicants, we would like more top applicants than they propose. Got it. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, and then the last update we kind of already mentioned, uh, we are proposing to have a um, mural ordinance community input meeting, which will be scheduled for mid-November. Um, and then pending that um, meeting, we'll make sure to uh, address any feedback, any community input from that meeting, as well as tap the Commissioner Vidor for her feedback on the meeting as well. Uh, those are the updates that we have. Oh, lastly, I'm sorry, one last update for marketing and communication. Staff is in the process of drafting uh, an RFQ for a PR firm based on Ms. Buhoff's um, recommendation at the last commission meeting. Uh, as you can imagine, we're juggling a lot of different projects in the air right now, but we're doing our best to, to draft that as quickly as possible so that we can have an update, um, ideally a draft and an update for you at the November 18th uh, commission meeting. And uh, those are the updates that I have. Perfect, thank you. Very exciting. Well, a lot that we went over today. <laughs> And moving on, we have commission uh, mm -hmm. agenda item seven commission staff comments. Uh, Vice Chair Yang. Any staff, any comments? Sorry, I took a while to find the mute button. Um, <laughs> uh, no, that it sounds like great work that you guys are doing. Um, Jennifer, I'm very excited to, uh, very excited about the PR firm um, RFQ. So is that something that we might be able to look at before you send that out? I'd Absolutely. Love to look at what some of the qualifications are that we're looking for. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Yes. I Apologies, Vice Chair Yank. Yes, we will provide a draft, uh, ideally as soon as possible, ideally the November meeting. Um, and the commission will, of course, review it before it gets sent out and published widely. Okay, fantastic. Um, and yeah, other than that, just great work. And I'm excited about all of these upcoming projects. Commissioner Bayar? Um, you've been busy, Jennifer. Um, thanks. Thanks for all your good work. There sure are a lot of uh, things for us to get out and see before the next wave of projects come in. So um, get to, uh, yes, we all need to get to um, Arts Act Creative and um, to Light Waves and all the beautiful things that Jennifer has been working on. <laughs> thanks. I'm sure we do work. Um, yeah, uh, I agree and I uh, thank you all and of course, thank you, Jennifer, for all the work that you're doing. It's really fantastic um, and I know there's a lot going on at, at the library as well and Reflect Space. So the whole library arts and culture function is really wor working beautifully and, um, and I'm really, you know, happy to be very proud to be part of this commission. Um, I had a question about um, or Earth Day, actually, it was suggested um, to me by a friend who had kind of a cool suggestion to maybe have um, a public call or do something maybe within GLAC to get children or just maybe the community at large to make art projects out of recyclables. So it would be a contributive, a contributive, oh, you know what I mean? thing uh, that, uh, you know, kind of like Dios de las Muertes, where people uh, contribute altars um, and dedications to uh, loved ones and dead people. And this could be something where people create out of recyclables or found objects or garbage and maybe focus it on children. And um, that seemed like kind of an interesting idea. I know we have quite a few things uh, scheduled for that, uh, that day, um, but I just, thought maybe perhaps that could be agendized as something to consider. I don't know if there's enough time to turn that around, but I just thought I'd bring it up. Commissioner. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, 
a great idea. We would certainly share, be open to sharing that with the children's staff. We don't typically tell them what to do. Uh, they brainstorm what programs uh, they're doing uh, themselves, but we'll certainly offer that as a, a potential option for them. But again, that would be up to them whether that would be something that they could fit into their very busy schedule. But it certainly seems apropos and fitting with, you know, uh, just the current zeitgeist around sustainability and all of that. So we'll certainly pass that along to them. Right. Would it be possible also to consider a call for an artist who could coordinate something, you know, that it would be kind of outsourced to? Um... Uh, we could look at that. I think we should talk as a commission, what do we want to push back in order to fit that into oh. the schedule? Because right. we certainly have a very full slate of things going right. on right now. So mm -hmm. that would be the yeah. only, you know, right. part of that. I, I am sensitive to that. I just wanted yeah. to throw it into the mix. Okay, thank you. I will I will briefly just share with the impending storms exhibit that's part of um, the Earth Day celebrations and it's going to be as an art hop project at the Central Library. Um, the artists have proposed uh, an arts engagement activity, so uh, I wish I could bring up the, the visual, but there is large fish netting um, that's going to be part of the installation where the artists have uh, sourced different people to contribute uh, drawings of animals and sustainability. Uh, they are specifically on six by six paper and are black and white. Um, and at Central Library, we're trying to coordinate at least one week or two weeks where there will be a table available with uh, the six by six paper and pencils so that that students, children, adults, whomever it might be, might be able to contribute a, a drawing and then add it to the netting. Um, so that's a, a type of engagement that we do have, um, at least for that exhibit. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't aware that uh, the Blue Marble Project had that community engagement, or maybe I forgot. So. It, it's brand new. <laughs> it's still in the oh. works. So we're we're still trying to sort out the logistics, but that's an idea that they just recently proposed. Thank Jennifer, you. could we possibly uh, get more information or a presentation on that next time, just so we're more aware if someone asks us, we're more aware with uh, uh, about what's going on? Sure, I can definitely include that as the, the update for the AHA projects and provide a more visual on the kind of sort of finalized logistics that we're in the process of confirming. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner Vidor, done or? I'm done. I have no Thank you. Or comments. Commissioner Zadorian? Yes, I have no questions or comments. Just thank you very much, as always, to Jennifer and staff. Yes. Okay, and again, thank you to um, Jennifer and to Gary and Mike and everyone who's who are working so hard to bring so much art to Glendale. So really excited about that. Exciting time to be in the arts in Glendale. You bet. Thank you. Um, agenda item eight is written communications. We do not have any. And agenda item nine is adjournment. Wow, we ripped through this one. <laughs> <laughs> it was fast. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for your service. Bye.